And it's a great day in aviation here in North Carolina. Uh, the State of Aviation 2022 has just been announced, and uh, they are some strong, strong, strong numbers. And we are very proud, and we are very thankful that the team that is making that happen uh, is right here. And the businesses and the recreational flyers and the corporate flyers and the medevac and the cargo and all those operations and air transportation that are making this possible is happening right here today. So if you hear any noise outside, I love that sign uh, down in Goldsboro. We love noise. We love noise too. And that's the sound of air transportation happening here at Johnson Regional. So again, there's a lot of great folks here. I appreciate you being here. And I'm going to get things started off by introducing our airport authority chairman, Mr. Ken Starling. Uh, Ken Starling is a corporate pilot. Uh, he has been a part of Johnson Regional Airport for many years and is a um, is a big part of the success of this airport here in this region. So, Ken, come on up. Thank you, Phil. Thank you for everyone that has attended today. This, as Phil said, this is a, uh, uh, a great opportunity to take a look at the actual numbers of aviation. We all know aviation is growing, the economy is growing, different facets of it. But I think what the Division of Aviation has done by trying to put a number and actually get uh, a head count, I guess, a dollar count of what actually is going on with aviation is tremendous, it's tremendously uh, beneficial, I guess, is a good word for, for all of us, it, for our stakeholders, for the public to know what actually an airport does other than create noise. Um, as Phil said, I'm a corporate pilot. I've been flying professionally for over 40 years and I have a unique opportunity to travel all over the country and the world to see different airports. And I try to use that to, to mold our airport into what is needed uh, by our base customers, by our transient customers that fly through. Um, what, our, what our board does, and we have a great board, is we try to keep the perspective that this airport is just like an interstate highway. It belongs to all of us. And we try to use the the money that we have received and use that to, to grow the airport in the right way. We have um, small airports, got, I mean, small tenants, people that just fly on Sunday afternoons. We have people that fly a small plane for their business. We have corporate jets, as you see in this hangar, that we're able to, to get to the airport. And that's part of our problem is we have, we're growing. Uh, 10 years ago, we couldn't give away a hangar. I remember us debating on the board about making an ad. We spent $2,000 for a national ad to go out <laughs> in magazines. We had a hangar available and nobody, we had no response. Nobody would come for it. And now Phil gets calls weekly of people that want to reposition it here. So thank you for all the, the support that we received. Thank you for all the funding. We'll continue to do a good job managing that growth and uh, which statistics like we're going to hear today, it really helps uh, everyone, general public, right, right on up to the top, know what we're doing here. So this time I'll turn it over to Mr. Bobby Austin with the Department of Aviation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll raise this up a little bit. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to, to be in Johnston County this morning. Uh, as Ken said, I'm Bobby Walston, Director of the Division of Aviation for NCDOT, and it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be with you in, in Johnston County. Uh, we're loca centrally located, the Division of Aviation. We serve our entire state from Raleigh-Durham Airport, um, 72 airports in our system of airports. And, uh, you know, Johnston County is in a unique and well-positioned location. Uh, I'd say about 25 years ago, FAA came out with the concept of reliever airports. And Johnston County is truly a reliever airport to RDU. So your larger, more commercialized airports like Charlotte, Raleigh, Greensboro have a network or system of reliever airports that surround, surround these larger airports to basically pull some of the general aviation and corporate traffic out to uh, allow greater capacity at some of our larger commercial service airports. And that's exactly what Johnston County is and has been for a long time, but is, as we all know, what is happening in North Carolina and our economy is just 
good, bad, whatever's going on, we continue to be very, very strong. And that's a representation of what's in this study and in this report and in the numbers specifically to Johnston County. So congratulations, Phil, for the, for the great job out here and for the obvious growth that we're talking about. And just for the record, I don't really call it noise. I call it sound. Some, you know, the Air Force calls it the sound of freedom. And, uh, but uh, it's, it's a great sound that what I hear and being at the airport at Raleigh, I hear quite a bit as well. But um, it's the sound of business. Aviation is business and uh, means a lot to our economy. We know that for sure. And this report, um, we, we've been putting it out now every couple of years, uh, you know, for a lot of good information and data. But I like to say that this report, which is the state of aviation for North Carolina, if you were to take your arms and wrap it around the state, everything related to aviation and what's happening and the impacts of aviation in our state is contained in this report. And a big part of that are the airports and this system of 72 airports. So with that, I'm always delighted to be here and talk, but uh, I've got our Secretary of Transportation here with us and I'm, I'd like to introduce uh, J. Eric Boyette. He has served as North Carolina's Transportation Secretary since February of 2020, and he oversees one of the largest state-maintained highway systems in the nation in all modes of transportation, including aviation, ferries, rail, public transit, bike, and pedestrian transportation, as well as uh, overseeing the Office of Civil Rights and the Division of Motor Vehicles. Uh, Secretary Boyette has spent most of his 25 plus years of public service experience working for North Carolina Department of Transportation in several key roles, including Chief Information Officer, Inspector General, and Division of Motor Vehicles Commissioner. He also previously served as the Secretary and State Chief Information Officer for the North Carolina Department of Information Technology. So please welcome Secretary Boyette. You're really fortunate to, to have his time and his presence here today, and I'm delighted that he's here to to help kick off uh, what this study and what this means to talk about aviation in North Carolina. So, Mr. Secretary. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It's always great to be in Johnston County. I'm gonna adjust this down, Bobby, you're too tall. Um, as Bobby said, you know, we're so excited every time we release this report. Uh, when we look at the future of aviation, how our unit, uh, our aviation department, what they do for the 72 airports that you heard Bobby talk about. They're great partners, but it takes two people to have that partnership. And the airports are that partner for us. And we want to thank them for what they do to help us each and every day. But if you look at the history, North Carolina has always led the way and will continue to lead the way. But the 10 commercial airports and the 62 general airports, they connect, as you heard Bobby talk about, not only people, but products. And as we all know, with the supply chain issues we've had, it's been a very important part of our economy. As you look at the airports, it represents 10% of our GDP, which is billions of dollars for our economy. It's hundreds and thousands of jobs and also billions more in personal income, state, local tax revenues. We're proud to support our airports each and every day. And what did you know that 98% of our aviation budget goes directly to infrastructure development, maintenance projects, technical assistance, and airport management training. It's what these people do each and every day, Bobby's team. They're proud of it. I can tell you each and every time I walk in the door, they want to talk about what they're doing and where they can do more. So we're thankful for what money we do get and how we can help you each and every day. We're also proud of the sponsorship and the partners that we have for our ACE program. It's the Aviation Career and Education. It's our outreach so that we can talk to young individuals about their future. Let's look at aviation. Let's look at, you know, aerospace professionals. What do you want to be when you grow up? So it's a great partnership there we also have with our airports. I also must recognize the resilience of our airports through the last pandemic we've gone through and how we came out of it so fast and how they were so comfortable when they worked through this pandemic and were ready not only for our businesses, our military, but for our traveling public. That's because they've had 
a lot of time, a lot of investment, and a lot of technology to look through each and every way to move us forward through things like the pandemic that we're going to see and continue to see. North Carolina hosts the fifth busiest airport in the world in air traffic and the most recovered of any United States airline hub since 2019, and that will be our Charlotte Douglas International Airport. So we continue to fight and move forward. Price Waterhouse Coopers ranked North Carolina as the sixth most attractive state for aerospace manufacturing. And I can tell you with the 200 aerospace companies and 400 supply technicians that we have, they agree wholeheartedly. But when you talk about business, we are a way and continue to attract new and innovative businesses and work with them each and every day. It's because of the partnerships we have with our local communities, with our airports, and how we move things forward. And when you look at the future, we also continue to partner with our each and every one of our companies. When we have products like and issues where we're trying to do things like we do bridge inspection, how do we do that better? There's a beyond program. When we have inspections that we need to do, we don't have to do lane closures anymore. We can actually take a drone and go around and look around the support items and support beams on those bridges. So it helps us keep the public, traveling public moving and also do what we need to do. And one that we were first in the nation to do again was for our incident management assistant patrols, our IMAP trucks. So we've got tethered drones now that we launch with those IMAP vehicles so that our STOC, our traffic operations centers, can actually see firsthand on, those, on the ground what's happening. Once again, North Carolina is leading the way. First in flight, we've heard it. We'll continue to be first in North Carolina and leader in aviation. I've only touched on a few of the items that are in the report, so I encourage you to please read the report. It's packed full of information and data. Um, and I just want to say thank you for being our partners, all of our airports, all of our communities, um, and thank you for having me here today. And I want to thank our aviation division, Bobby and your team, uh, such a great um, effort from them to make sure that they spend every dollar that we receive from our budget to make sure it goes to our communities and to each and one of the 72 airports. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'm Butch Lauder. I'm chairman of the Johnston County Commissioners. And on behalf of my fellow commissioner, I know Ted Godwin is here right there. I don't think anyone else has come in. But I also want to recognize uh, Rick Hester, our county manager, for the work they do. Also want to thank the airport staff uh, for what they do. Uh, and also our airport authority board for the work that you do to make this possible to, to celebrate successes. I know a lot of what we do uh, in local government is is tedious and behind the scenes, but it is great to be able to come out and celebrate the successes that we have, such as here is at JNX and Johnson Regional Airport and airports across the state. I did also want to thank some of our partners, our members of the General Assembly. We got Larry Strickland and uh, Representative Donald White here. We have newly elected uh, sworn in, <coughs> almost bent and sorry. So he's going to follow the good work these two have done. He's going to take the lead. Uh, on that, also the DOT, and we've already heard from, thank you for your investment in Johnson Regional Airport. Also the private partners that make it possible for us to get things done quicker uh, than government may move. So we want to thank Blue Line Aviation and Capital Aircraft. I think Capital Aircraft is doing the work right out here behind us. We all walk by coming in. Uh, also want to thank the local businesses who've been mentioned who keep their aircraft here and use it for their business purposes, and also the public whether it's you, they have a plane here, uh, they fly out of here, or the public who comes and enjoys our restaurant uh, here. So thank, thank you to the public. And uh, a little few words on, on the success. Uh, as Johnson County continues to grow uh, and have sustain, sustained success across many sectors, we're talking about small businesses, we're talking about tourism, agriculture, industry, and, and tr of course, transportation. Um, Johnson County Regional Airport is a great asset to this community. I think those who've been around a long time, I'm not a lifer here, but I've been here 30 years, so that's most of it, to see where this, you know, this airport has, where it started and, and where it is now and where it's going to is pretty amazing. So, and I think the, we can say that this airport mirrors the success 
not only in Johnston County, but the entire Triangle region. Uh, we're very fortunate to have uh, Johnston County Airport and where it's headed. And I look forward to many more celebrations of successes of the public private partnerships that we have here. And to borrow a phrase from the man in the back, Chris Johnson, grow with Joe Go. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to Representative Strickland. Good morning. <clears throat> On behalf of the uh, myself and my fellow colleagues in the uh, Johnson County delegation, it's a great day today. Uh, all the long hours that we spend in the building uh, trying to develop budgets and bring money to different parts of our state is very satisfying to see what this airport has done in the last six years since uh, Representative White and myself have been in the General Assembly. The 2023 North NCDOT State of the Ava Aviation Report only re reinforces the positive impact on local economy. My office and we in the General Assembly have long been strong supporters of transportation, in particular our regional airports such as Johnston Regional Airport. Today's numbers show that the importance of our regional airports, which are a multiplier of economics. My colleagues at the General Assembly are committed to continue support, investment, and grow our regional airports. We greatly appreciate our public and private support and our partnerships. Again, it's great to be here today. I look forward to a lot more of these in the next few years. This is a very important part of the economic development for the County of Johnston and all these regional airports across our state do the same thing for their individual counties. So again, thank you and glad to be here today. Good morning. Mr. Lanier, thank you so much. You know, it takes everyone in this room to make all this happen, but you're the face and you're the voice, and you make sure that our offices know what's going on, and that is so important when we, not only in the help that we've already given, but in future uh, action in that regard. So thank you so much, and your staff. Thank you. It's so good. I just mentioned to um, uh, Mr. Boyette and, um, and my fellow rep, uh, Strickland, as we walked over how three Johnstonians can really get something done when you get out of our way and let us do that, right? <laughs> and this room is filled today with great Johnstonians and those that have moved here and chosen this as a home place. We thank you so much for being with us. I want to speak just a moment, um, a little bit different, just giving it a little personal touch. As majority uh, chair of the Life Science Caucus in the House, it is really comforting to know that our regional airport is maximizing its program assets and planning to expand <clears throat> to allow larger craft to get to the runways. My district is home to the two largest pharmaceutical companies in the, in the world. And um, for that reason, and knowing that others are anticipating coming to Johnson County, um, it is very important that we have a great regional airport, and we do, and we will continue to have that um, as we care for the infrastructure to continue to meet the current needs and to meet and to um, have this type of life science industry in Johnson County is just so important for the future. As a registered nurse, <clears throat> I'm also very interested to discuss, <clears throat> Representative Boyette, um, <laughs> not Representative Boyette, you are my representative for this issue. <laughs> um, as a registered nurse, I'm also very interested in having a life flight link to this, uh, this airport through the, with the highway patrol. And I would like for us to be able to talk about that and move that forward. Um, you know, they have a facility out on um, Old Garner Road that they could really use us. <laughs> so let's talk about that in the future. We have so many possibilities with this um, well-managed and financially sound infrastructure. So on behalf of the Life Science Caucus, 
the back is bicameral and bipartisan. We want to wish you um, a great con uh, congratulations, and we look forward to programs and supports to continue this expansion. And also, I want to take this time to offer you: we have a monthly or sometimes quarterly uh, by caucus, uh, by Campbell bipartisan committee for the Life Science Caucus. And I would love for you to be able to come and pr present to them. We usually have breakfast at eight, seven o'clock or 7.30 in the representative's cafeteria, which is the 1950 school cafeteria model. So don't expect any bells and whistles, <laughs> but we have good food. <laughs> so we would love to have you all come and present to our Life Science Caucus. It's so good to be in Johnson County today. Thank you so much. Good morning. Um, my name is Benton Sorry. I am the senator-elect. Um, as was pointed out, I've not been sworn in yet as a Commissioner Walter noted. I don't have a, you can tell, I don't have a pin on my lapel like, um, like Representative White did. I'll also say, so this is a week of first for me. Um, I'll be sworn in for the first time on Wednesday, and it's also the first time I've ever talked in front of an airplane. Um, I, I gave uh, Mr. Johnson a hard time for bringing out all the stops today. Um, the, uh, this is a great celebration. Johnson County's airport is really special. It is an integral part of the economic engine of Johnston County. Um, when large corporations come to talk about Johnson County as a landing place for a manufacturing plan or investment, they look to see this runway has capacity. They look to see this runway has available hangar space. They can fly executives, employees in and out. Um, it's a part of the economic engine, and, and I'm excited to go to Raleigh and be a part of making sure that we have continued investment in this infrastructure product back to home. Um, we, we've done so in the General Assembly over the past several years, but there's a long way to go. Um, it's come a long way. Uh, you know, I was talking to Mr. Lanier on the way over here and discussing how it was a, um, you know, it was a single building with a grass field. Uh, Mr. Stevens talked about how there was an X on the runway when he first was uh, maybe the first person to land on it uh, many, many years ago. Um, and now we have this beautiful terminal behind us. We have these new investments. Um, so just like Johnson County is continuing to grow, this airport is continuing to grow. Um, and I'm excited to see where it's going to be in the next 20 or 30 years. So. Thank you for being a part of this. Thank you for the celebration. To everybody on the airport board and Mr. Lanier, congratulations on this great achievement um, and being part of such a great investment here in the county. And I look forward to seeing where the next 10 years take us. Thank you. Thank you again to everyone that came out today. I've got some board members here and I hope I don't miss anyone because I'm doing this off the cuff. Randy Jones, and Patrick Pierce, uh, who actually came from the uh, West Coast around the Seattle region and knows a lot about aviation. We've got tremendous opportunity here. And, and uh, first, I want to make sure that I introduce uh, a field representative for our newly elected uh, Congressman Wiley Nichols. This is Miss Kelly Jones. She does not have an office. She does not have any business cards because I was asking her for all this information and she says, this is like my second or third day on the job. So we certainly do welcome you to Johnston County and to JNX and look forward to that continued partnership with the federal government because without uh, the federal involvement, uh, none of this could have been possible. So uh, a couple of housekeeping notes uh, for the press, uh, Mr. Lanier and myself and any of the dignitaries will be available after this uh, event is over for any type of an additional comments or quotes or uh, if interviews. Uh, so uh, just let us know. Also, I want to make sure that everyone is uh, involved or invited over back over to the warm uh, terminal where we do have uh, coffee and other pastries. I thought I, I just looked out there and I see um, <clears throat> one of my uh, board members there so i apologize for the um, not the introduction but um, overlooking that so uh, but anyway we certainly do appreciate uh, everyone being here when you just look in this facility alone and the importance to johnston county uh, there's close to 40 million dollars worth of aircraft and that means a huge impact to the county of johnston when you think about tax revenue None of these we have to run water or sewer to. None of these we have to educate as far as kids. Uh, they drink a lot of fuel, which goes into the, uh, the coffers of the county. So that's the true importance of, of the airport and why we're, we're here. Uh, when you think of 2001 numbers and today's numbers that have been reported, 
uh, they're nearly double. Just in the tax revenue for JNX, it's gone from 5.9 to 13 million, uh, from 40 million in personal income up to 74 million, and then the local impact uh, from 121 to uh, 210 million dollars. That is where the proof is. And uh, if if that's been done over the last just year, year and a half, then we can only imagine uh, what's in store for us in the future. So we greatly appreciate everyone uh, today being here today. Thank you very much. And again, uh, let's grow with Joe Code. Thank you, Chris. That uh, that concludes the press conference. Uh, as he said, we, we can uh, convene back at the terminal. Uh, also, uh, Trey Van is here. Uh, he's the chief pilot that flies some of these jets here. So if anybody would like to take a look inside, please hang out and uh, we'll be glad to show you around. So again, thank you so much for coming to Johnson Regional. Thank you for being a part of the team uh, that makes our state and our country great. So thank you very much for being here.